الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه وحبيبه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في سبيل دينه حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وآمتنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى tells us in the Quran إن الله يدافع عن الذين آمنوا Allah certainly defends the believers those who believe in him He also tells us إنا لننصر رسلنا والذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا ويوم يقوم الأشهاد Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that He certainly supports and gives victory to His messengers and to the believers in this life and on the day the witnesses are resurrected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not weaken, do not give in and you are going to have the upper hand if you truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With all of these ayat and many, many others in the same vein and the same theme, confirming and assuring the believers that Allah is with the believers. In Allah is always with those who have mindful brains and hearts to connect to Allah and those who are doing good by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With all of this, we look around us all over the Muslim world and we see that Muslims are not really victorious. Muslims are not really supported by Allah. Muslims are not really uh, given victory. In fact, they are actually snatched by their enemies, right and left. And all what we do is to say, Subhanallah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, as if this is a bridge that we can cross over to avoid the trouble we are putting ourselves in. The Prophet ﷺ explains the dichotomy between Allah's promises and our current situation that has been going on for centuries. It is quite very unfortunate to state the fact that we are letting down our own next generation of Muslims. We are delivering them a world that's worse off than what we received. It's worse off. A reality that is going to be extremely difficult for them, not only to stand up and push back, but to even sit down safely. This is a sad reality that we must recognize as Muslims. So today I want to address this issue because this issue is on the table. This issue has been on the table for centuries. But very few people would address it and address it thoroughly enough to awaken our conscience and to alert us for our future and the future we are going to leave behind for our children and, may I say, also even grandchildren. 
because the correction for centuries of humiliation, oppression, demoralization, and defeats cannot be corrected in a generation or two. It took several generations for the generation of Salahuddin to come back and to stand up and to push back. But at least we have to sow the seeds. We have to sow something in the ground that gives us hope that maybe the future, the near future, will start a new trend for our ummah. And because this problem or these problems and issues are for the whole Muslim ummah worldwide, many of us shrug them off as it is not my responsibility. What can I do? Single individual. What could we do even as a community like ours? What could we actually do to change a whole world's vision of what Islam is, who Muslims are, what Prophet Muhammad وسلم, stands for, what does the Quran actually call people to? How could we as a single community do anything about it? Here is the catch. The rule in Sharia is مَا لَا يُدْرَكْ كُلُّهُ لَا يُتْرَكْ جُلُّهُ Whatever you need to do, if you could not do 100% of it, do as much of it as you can. But to say this is too much to do and do nothing, you're adding to the problem. You are creating a situation, an atmosphere, and an attitude in the ummah that this ummah has given up. This ummah is dead. And no community should stand for this. No community should stay silent against all of what is going on of genocide, burning people alive, imprisoning people in millions. In the open daylight, the latest episode we have seen in Sudan in the past few days is just one episode. But the disease is the same and it is infectious. You get a group of military people in one country who are sold to the enemies of this country for cash or for promises or for power or all, and they go against their own people. Egypt has done the same. Uh, Syria has done the same. Every country in the Middle East has been completely sold to whom? Not the highest bidder, but anyone that can give secure thrones for those who are in power. And we lately heard uh, President Trump, right, teasing the king of Saudi Arabia that you king need to understand that if it were not us, you wouldn't stay in your place for two weeks. What else? Are we going to go through, is there any lower level than this? Then it requires that we think about what is the real disease? What is the real disease that rendered our ummah into the surrendering to its enemies? Cash or credit or nothing. And if you say, because our rulers are bad. Well, they didn't come to power when we were asleep. They came to power when we were alive. Our forefathers who received them 70 and 100 years ago, they were alive and well like us. Now the cancer has reached that people are snatching members of the Muslim Ummah, right and left, turning them into dark side prisons, torture chambers, detention camps, until they break their will, and if there is any life left in them, they throw them in the desert to die. This is not a state of an Ummah that really cares to be the best Ummah ever sent to mankind. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ You have been the best of nations, sent out to people. 
to humanity to do what? We are the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a message. And the message is our mission to, to deliver it, to study it, to understand it, to practice it, to teach it to our kids, and to teach it to anybody around us who is interested. This is very simple. And if we do this, enjoy the good, and forbid the evil, and we become the best of nations, Allah is not going to send our enemies against us. But the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, says, لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَتَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ أَوْ لَيَبْعَثَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ عَدُوًّا يَسْتَبِيحُ بَيْضَتَكُمْ Unless you enjoin the good and forbid the evil, Allah will send an enemy against you who would really destroy you. And we are seeing it now. So does it need any explanation? The Prophet ﷺ gives us the reason in another hadith that we all memorize. Everyone memorizes. يُوشِكُ أَن تَدَاعَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأُمَمْ كَمَا تَدَاعَ الْأَكَلَةُ إِلَىٰ قَصْعَتِهَا قَالُوا أَوَ مِنْ قِلَّةٌ نَحْنُ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ لَا بَلْ أَنْتُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ كَثِيرٌ وَلَكِنَّكُمْ غُثَاءٌ كَغُثَاءِ السَّيْلِ وَلَا يَنْزَعَنَّ اللَّهُ الْمَهَابَةَ مِنْ قُلُوبِ أَعْدَائِكُمْ The fear they had in their heart from you will be taken out. وَلَا يَقْذِفَنَّ فِي قُلُوبِكُمُ الْوَهَنْ And he will throw weakness and vulnerabilities into your heart. You will have defeatedness in your heart. They asked, what is wahan? قِيلَ وَمَا الْوَهَنْ قَالَ حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَةُ الْمَوْتِ Your attachment and love of this dunya and your hatred of death and the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the diagnosis of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to our situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. Allah does not change the condition of a community unless and until they change what is in their hearts, what is in themselves. This love has to be switched. We have to love the meeting with Allah more than we love this dunya. Why do we cry over death? Why do we cry over somebody leaving us one station earlier? We are joining them. We are joining everybody who dies. Why are we so shocked that somebody dies when we all know that everybody is dying anyway? And Allah tells us, you are much better off dying in a cause than dying without any cause. You will die anyway. وَلَإِن مِتُّمْ أَوْ قُتِلْتُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَحْمَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ It will be much better that you die in defense of your dignity, in defense of your ummah, in defense of your faith, in defense of your community, than waiting for death to come and doing nothing. Stand up for your mission. So we cannot leave our next generation to continue to suffer the same humiliation for eternity because we decided not to do anything different. We have to do things different from what our forefathers have done. If they were afraid of the forces of occupation, we should never fear anyone but Allah. This is a principle that we must resign to. We must accept it. It is our responsibility to believe Allah and to trust His promise. In yansurkum. If you support Allah's cause, Allah will support you. So we have to be careful 
not to repeat the same mistakes our forefathers have done. The Prophet ﷺ foretold us that we will have very bad unjust rulers ruling over us. You know some of what they do and you deny some of what they do. You denounce some of their attitude. But the majority of our peoples today, they want to acquiesce and play cat those oppressive regimes to the maximum out of fear or out of desire to get some gains or protection or to get some things done for themselves or their family. We've done this for centuries. It is time to go back to our principles. Fear them not. فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِ this is what Allah is telling us. Do not fear anyone, only fear me. The Prophet ﷺ in the hadith says, مَنْ خَافَ اللَّهَ وَحْدَهُ خَوَّفَ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ وَمَنْ خَافَ غَيْرَ اللَّهَ خَوَّفَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Anyone who fears Allah alone, everything else fears him. And anyone who fears anything or anyone other than Allah, he will be afraid of everything. We have to change our attitude. We have to change our posture and our position. And we have to change our outlook for the future. Nobody in the right mind, Muslim or otherwise, wants to leave for inheritance, humiliation, defeat, corruption, and mayhem and chaos where they once stepped over. Allah told us, Allah is the one who raised up from the earth and he entrusted us to develop it, to build it, not to destroy it. He tells us, قَاتِلُوهُمْ يُعَذِّبُهُمُ اللَّهُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَنْصُرُكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ Fight back against those who are fighting you. Defend your life. Defend your children. Defend your women. Of course, some of you may ask, what are you talking about? Fight who and defend whom? I'm talking about our ummah. I'm not just talking about a condition for our community. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us a secure place and a legal system to work through. But there is a zakah that we have to pay. At least, at least, there must be with us elements that are not available for others. We have the luxury of time to read and understand what is going on. They don't. We live in a nation that values hard work and discipline but we are not learning hard work and discipline we live in a nation that respects its own system we should respect our own system that Allah has sent for us then we would be learning from where we live there is always a zakah for your safety for your security for your rizq there is always a zakah for your health, there is a zakah. Look around the world and see the people who believe like you, who pray like you, but now millions are not able to enjoy 1% of what you enjoy. We have to share. There is a zakah for the freedom we have. There is a zakah for the wealth we build. There is a zakah for the knowledge we collect. It must go to our ummah to help at least those who are willing to be helped. But to leave everything for the future, the future is today plus yesterday plus the day before plus the year before is your tomorrow. Our future is very predictable. 
the trajectory is going down, it's not going up. Unless we change course and start loving Allah and loving what He had promised us, to love Allah is to love His angels. To love His angels is to love His prophets. To love His prophets is to follow His prophets. To love His prophets and to follow them is to follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not doing none of that except very few of us. And they cannot pull that heavy train all by themselves. So they end up giving up. So we have to pull that train. You live in Washington, one of the strongest capitals in the world, that you can voice your views and get policies to change. At least educate the people around you. What is going on in China is unacceptable. What's going on in Palestine is unacceptable. Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Egypt, Libya, Sudan, it's unacceptable. What Muhammad bin Zayed and Muhammad bin Salman are doing is wrong. It is wrong. Who is going to shout in their face and tell them this is wrong? If not us, we are the only group of Muslims who are free and they have the right, the legal right to voice their views publicly. But we're not doing it. We have to speak up. We have to stand up. Otherwise, all of those being killed and their bloods being shed, they are going to ask us. You were living in Washington of all places, but you did nothing or little to change the direction of things. We cannot leave the future to be handled by others. If you wait for the future to bring you something different, it will, but it's never going to be better. If you want the future to be better, you have to do it. You have to be willing to sacrifice. Faith is not a cakewalk. Faith is not a cakewalk. This is the lesson the Prophet ﷺ forwarded to Mus'ab ibn Umayr when he came to announce that he wants to be a Muslim. He was a wealthy man coming dressed in silk and jewelry and everything and he wants to come and become a Muslim. And the Prophet ﷺ, out of care and love, he told him, listen, if you become a believer, إِذَنْ يُرَاقُ دَمُكْ وَيُعْقَرُ فَرَسُكْ وَيَضِيعُ مَالُكْ Your blood will be shed, your horse will be knocked down, and your wealth will be gone. He wanted him to know that coming to be a Muslim is going to be faced with lots of challenges. And he was not making this up. The Prophet was told about the persecution that happened to Christians before Islam. In Surah Al-Buruj, it was a Christian community that was thrown into the ditches and the fire and the oil was pouring over their head and they were burned alive. The Prophet knew that this is part of the Sunnah of Allah. If you are to believe, you will be tested and you have no choice. What test Allah will put you through? The only choice you have is how to respond to that test. We accepted faith, but we did not accept the challenge. Mus'ab ibn Umayr, he accepted both. He said to the Prophet ﷺ, I am ready for anything. And Allah used him in a single year to come back to the Prophet with 72 leaders from Medina, who believed in Islam. One year, one man, 72 leaders, not just lay people. We live here 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and we don't even gain one person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One. We should be ashamed. But that's not the purpose of my speech. The purpose and the point is, we know what we need to do and we need to do what we know we need to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts and expand our chest and enable us to do 
his will. Alhamdulillah, wa kafa, wa salat, wa salam, wa ala ibadi, wa ladina, stafa, wa ashadu ala ilaha illa Allah, wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu wa ba'd. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ahli wa sahbihi ajma'in wa anna ma'um bi rahmatika arham ar-rahimin Brothers and sisters, as we are talking about our ummah and we look west and north and we find that those nations are very strong Allah has given them a lot but what are we doing with what Allah has given us? What are we doing? What are we doing with the resources that Allah has put in our own hands as Muslims? We left them for the wolves, the liars, the corrupt, the hypocrites, and we are saying we can do nothing. No, we can do a lot. The first step for our ummah to move forward is number one, to change our attitude towards what is possible and what's impossible. I remember this and I will repeat it again. I said it here before. President Kennedy in the 60s, talking about the space discovery and trips and expenditure that he started the journey into the space, he said, we go to the moon and do those many other things necessary for advancing our country, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. People who climb the mountains are not the weak-willed communities. It is people who have the will, the resolve, and the determination that what is difficult is a challenge, and we are going to overcome all challenges. This is how we should approach this. We should never lower our head to anybody but Allah. We should never bow down to anyone but Allah. We should never surrender or submit except to Allah. Then Allah will give us the final push. Muslims never defeated their enemies because they had the bigger numbers or the better equipments. But they had the better resolve. At times they were defeated, but never gave up. At others, they were victorious, but they never obliterated their enemies. They never committed genocide. This is the difference. But our enemies, Allah told us, لا يرقبون في مؤمن إلا ولا ذمة كيف وإن يظهر عليكم لا يرقب فيكم إلا ولا ذمة. If they have the upper hand, our enemies would destroy and annihilate us to the last person. We have seen this several times in our lifetime. We should never wait for Muhammad bin Zaid or Muhammad bin Salman to lead our ummah to the doom and gloom they are doing. They should never be left. And I'm not singling them. All, hear me loud and clear, all of our community Muslim leaders in our countries, they are all corrupt. They are all sold for the lightest of price and for the least of promises that were never kept. They are only promised that they stay on the throne until they die or get assassinated. None of them lives alive. The only man who left alive was Suwar al the former ruler of Sudan. Only ruler that left the office alive. He was not dead and he was not assassinated. He left the office alive. We need to force these people to leave the office alive rather than dead and leaving chaos behind them. And we could do it. We could do it peacefully. 
It has been done before. Bin Ali fled his country alive, but he fled. He was not, it was not his choice. Mubarak left, right? It was not his choice. Saleh was killed. Qaddafi was killed. Some people are smart enough to leave early on, and some people want to snatch you to death unless they go to their own death. But we have to stand up for our faith and for our community. Otherwise, our children will not even have a country or a passport to live with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us what is right as right and help us do it. May Allah show us what is wrong as wrong and help us avoid it. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt wa aafina fi man aafayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt wa qina wa asrif anna sharra ma qadayt. Allahumma qsim lana min khashiyatik ma tahulu bi baynana wa bayna maasiyatik wa min ta'atik ma tubalighuna bihi jannatak wa min al-yaqeen ma tuhawun bihi alayna masaib al-dunya wa matti'na Allahumma bi asma'ina wa abusarina wa quwatina ma ahyaytana waj'aluhu al-wadith minna waj'al thaqrana ala man zalamana ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وإذا أردت بقومنا فتنة فنجنا منها يا مولانا غير خزايا ولا مفتونين ولا مبدلين ولا مغيرين اللهم لا تدع لنا في يومنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا كربا إلا نفسته ولا مبتلا إلا عافيته ولا سائلا إلا أعطيته ولا فقيرا إلا أغنيته ولا مدينا إلا قضيت دينه ولا ضالا إلا هديته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا مجاهدا إلا نصرته اللهم انصر عبادك المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم انصر عبادك المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم عليك بالطغاة الجبارين اللهم عليك بالطغاة المعتدين اللهم اختم لنا بخاتمة السعادة أجمعين مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة